Hello, you're welcome. You're welcome onto my channel today and it gives me great joy to observe you are viewing this video. Hi, I'm Dr. Olayenka Akonle. I am a lecturer in the university. I am a migration expert and on this channel, I do a number of stuff. I do sociology, I do research, I do relationship, I do migration. But this video today you are viewing is on migration. Meanwhile, have you subscribed to this channel? If no, kindly go ahead and tap subscribe on your screen right now. Click subscribe on your screen right now to subscribe to this channel. Today, the title of this video is How African Men Avoid or Cope with Frustration, Victimization, Maltreatment from Their Wives Abroad. How African Men Abroad Avoid or Cope with Victimization maltreatment from their wives you know when women and men are abroad african women african men when they are abroad is a different ball game so a lot of men go through enormous maltreatment victimization from their wives once they are abroad and i've seen this happen too much it's too common it's at crisis point i've seen too many cases in my course of moving around globally I've had reasons to be involved in a number of cases to address some of these cases and even have ongoing cases as I move across the world. And I think this crisis needs to be you know, blown open, let people be aware because many people just suddenly find themselves in this crisis of spousal victimization or maltreatment. It's so common that one in two African men abroad experience this one form of victimization and maltreatment from their wives abroad and you know i don't say well it's not my problem be careful so whether you are planning to move abroad or you are already abroad this video is for you and you have to be mentally prepared before you move abroad or when you are abroad that it can happen to anybody so and you have to prepare even when the going is good and if you're already in this situation you have to be very you have to be very strong and still listen to what I have to tell you. And it can happen to anyone. It doesn't matter. You know, one in two men abroad of African origin experience this, either through gender-based violence, either through their women having extramarital affairs, infidelity, and they can do nothing about it, or through eviction, you know. Or, you know, it's so common that when women of African origin call police abroad now, they are already thinking that ah, another black man is, a, is, a, is about to be evicted. Another African man is about to be turned in. And this is very common. If I ask police officers abroad, once they hear hello and, or 911 and they hear one African woman, they say, wow, another case or another African man is in trouble. So a lot of African women turn their their husbands or their partners in regularly you know and when and again according according to court court records you know you see that the the people with the highest number of divorce or highest number of reported spousal violence maltreatment victimization are africans not even asians no not even white people the According to court cases processes overseas, the group with the highest number of court cases relating to violence, relating to divorce, relating to custody, they are Africans and initiated by African men, African women. You know, you have people from Nigeria, people from Congo, people from Togo, you know, Togolese, Kenyans, Ghanaians, Cameroonians, Nigerian women, you know, using the court processes to turn in their husband and many men are frustrated on account of this and many don't know how to do unfortunately many men did not prepare for this in advance suddenly they just find themselves and they think okay when we get abroad it's my wife from africa no problem we'll continue the way we are doing in africa and it's a totally ball game because a lot of women get there they start sticking around hanging around with people who have been there who will then conscientize them also major factor is that the legal system, the social system, the economic system abroad favor women over, over men. Women are extremely protected abroad. Even women that tend to be reasonable in Africa 
once they get abroad and saw all these opportunities, legal protection, some of them turn to something else. And a lot of men suffer tremendously on account of this. A lot of men are on the street, many have been evicted, many are going to mental health problems, many are going through a lot of problems. Even some are suicidal on account of being victimized or maltreated by their wives abroad. Sometimes they are the ones that, that brought these women abroad, thinking that, but thinking that they will continue to be reasonable. But the legal system abroad that empowers women over men has made them a lot of them to begin to misbehave. And so this is very important for us to know women have been extremely empowered, no regard for men anymore, you know, and many men like the knowledge, you know, so that's why I'm making this video. If you're already in this situation, no problem. You can see how to cope or to avoid this. And if you are just, you just want to move overseas with your spouse, well, listen to this. Or you're already overseas with your spouse, everything is going well, listen to this. Many men are in this crisis also. Things were going on well for them before. Meanwhile, let me put a disclaimer. There are many marriages abroad that are doing well. People have been so old together. I'm not saying all marriages abroad, all relationships abroad are problematic. Some are fine. That's why I say one in two men. So that means there's still one that is doing well. But if you have one in two, it's still a very high case. It's a crisis situation when one in two men of African origin are having serious problems. So what strategies can men adopt to prevent themselves, to avoid being maltreated or victimized? you know, victimized, to avoid being maltreated or, or to avoid being frustrated. One thing men can do or that men are doing of African descent, African origin abroad is, you know, depending on peculiar situation, experiences, people involved, you know, situations they have. So there are different people are in different situations and different experiences, you know, or, or or background so the people involved are very important so this will determine what happens but generally african men abroad must have plan b that's number one people do you are in a marriage or a relationship have plan b that in case things get tough or the relationship breaks down or the relationship runs into turbulence what are you going to do let that plan b be always in your heart be mentally prepared that things can go bad because many people abroad started well but eventually things turned bad took the nose down and many were not prepared that's why you see cases where you have you know interspousal violence cases of homicides you know many just they just find themselves there you brought this random lady from africa just suddenly got there and turned to a bully begin to bully you around take, take custody of your children in a way you know evicted you from your house or start having other men affair when you are there thinking that you cannot do anything many african men are suffering in silence but they don't they can't tell anybody but have to they don't tell so must have plan b and be mentally prepared and believe that it can happen even to you as a man it doesn't matter don't say well my wife my lady my woman is religious is decent africa and african mentality are different from abroad mentality Women in Africa are different from women when they get abroad. I've seen very decent women in Africa get abroad and begin to frustrate their husband because of influences and the opportunity of the legal system that favors them and the economic opportunity that favors them more than men. You never can trust any human being. So the best thing is to protect yourself. I'm a sociologist and a migration expert, and I've seen cases all over the world. I move around a lot across the world and I've seen cases. So when I'm talking, I'm not just talking random, I'm talking based on facts. I've seen decent, wonderful women in Africa turn to bullies and something else overseas. You wonder whether they are still the same. So it can happen. So another thing is be careful before you acquire property. If you don't need to buy houses, you know, relax. You know, it's Africa that you think, well, I must buy a house, I must build a house, I must build that abroad. You have to be patient because buying a house can be actually the major problem that will lead to that violence in that relationship. Because many women, once they see that you now have property, they, are, they feel protected so they can kick you out. Not if you with that, they can take the property away from you and you go back to the street. So be careful. So the property, the house can become a liability rather than asset, which can empower your wife. To begin to change and begin or your woman to begin and begin to bully you 
because he, she knows that if if there is a problem, if you are reported, you are going to be kicked out. So be careful before you run into buying houses. And I have a lot of cases about around this that I may not want to say here. And invest in your own country. Don't make all your investment be, be abroad. Have your investment back in your own country. If you are Ghanaian, make sure you invest in Ghana. Buy houses in Ghana. If you are Kenyan, invest in your country. In case there is a problem over there, you have something to fall back on. Even though you do not return, you can leverage that investment of property in your country. So invest outside of where you are, abroad. You can invest in your own country or you can invest in other country. In case things happen here, you can find something there. And if you want to invest in country where you are abroad, let it be in your own name. Have your own. Let your woman have her own. Don't mix things together. Because if there is crisis, you may be emptied. So don't mix your investment together. Get your own. Let her get her own. So that if there is crisis, everybody goes with whatever is God. Another thing you can do is to have prenups. In, before you get married or bring the woman overseas, make sure you sign agreement that whatever happens, you keep your property. So you are not empty because if you don't have it, an agreement, she can take everything away from you. Or even if you don't have prenup, maybe you've married, even if you get abroad, let them be put on record. We, I can call that not. <laughs> no, it's not free because you're already married. So you cannot begin to or in relationship. But let there be. Let, don't bring African mentality abroad and say, hey, we're in Africa, everything we have, we have it together. You are kidding. I've seen too many cases. Don't bring African mentality abroad. Live the way they live abroad. Even white people have prenups. So that means they have prenuptial agreement. And they have agreement. So whether it's pre or within the marriage or relationship, make sure there is agreement. You know, and also another thing you can do, don't create an impression. Don't let the woman know that uh, you will not go back home. No. Let the woman know you can go back home. So you can invest home. The people at home can be involved. Many men will just get an impression, I'm not going back home. And the woman will think, well, we are here together. Nobody can, can get to know what is going on back home. No, don't create an impression that, okay, I'm already abroad. This is where I will die. Whatever happened between us, happen here and die here. No, don't create that impression. Let the woman know that at a point, you will go back home. So everything you do, so a little bit of the good part of African culture that controls African to be reasonable can still be exported to that country for the two of you to be reasonable. So don't create an impression that, okay, this is where we are now and it's fine now here. Don't run down country. A lot of Africans have the penchant of running down their countries, thinking that everything about Africa is bad. That's not entirely true. But if you create an impression that, okay, you are not here permanently. So the wife, or we are not here, you can still go back home, come back home. So the woman may tend to be more reasonable that, well, African values may still be important, or that people in Africa can still intervene if there is a crime. And they also know that the man may return to Africa and leave only her there if he's too frustrated. So the woman may tend to be more careful. And I've seen this happen a, long, a, lot, a lot of time. So create an impression that you may return. So everything does not start abroad and end abroad. And don't run into property, like I said. Don't rush into it. Rent apartment. Even when you have money, you can use to buy a mortgage or a house. Sometimes this property can be liability. So sometimes it's good to continue to rent. If you rent and the woman knows that you are renting, if you, you are kicked out, she'll be responsible for the rent all alone. She may be careful. <laughs> she may be careful. But when she knows that this property now is for is now here, if I kick him out, I will I will be the one to take this property. That may might make the woman to miss you. So if it's not rent the house, share the bills. So nobody owns anything. So and this thing is the rent is shared. So keep separate account and let everybody be responsible for it. So let everybody and invest in secret. Don't let everything be too open to the woman to the extent that she knows your worth and may take advantage of you. No, keep secret. Be discreet about some of these things. In case then this serves two purposes. She will not know how much you are worth. So that will not make her to misbehave and take everything from you. Then you also you are preparing for that time that a problem may come. So you will not just be emptied because it's only what they know that they can take from you. If they don't know, then you can fall back on whatever you have.
to keep it lo invest in secret invest in secret and no other point be established before you bring a woman abroad be established don't rush into bringing a relationship together be established be able to take care of yourself even if anything happens be established and work very hard don't ever depend on any woman hope you are listening Work very hard. Some people will say, I'm going abroad, I'll bring my spouse, my spouse will be working while I'm going to school. What? You know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad. Or some people just say, okay, it's my wife that's gotten a job, she's a nurse, she's techie, she's in tech, she's in IT, so I'll just be doing care. You just become a ram boy. And you become house husband without value. So work and work very hard. And it's very important. And join networks of responsible men abroad, people who have experiences. People who may have gone through the same situation or people can share experience with you. You know, you get abroad or you are there. Join networks of men who can share experience and enlighten you with different experiences. It can be virtual. You can join Facebook groups. You can join WhatsApp groups. You can join, follow on Twitter. All manners of things. And this is very important so they can share experience. And also, keep separate portfolios. Your own should be your own. Our own should be our own. And keep in touch with your king and friends abroad, you know, and this is very important. Let so if you put these are strategies that people use abroad, and if you are just going, take note of all of this. If you're already abroad, take note of all of this. Don't say it can never happen to me. My wife is an angel. You're kidding. I've seen too many angels, women, turn to something else. And women men suffer for it. I've seen too many men suffer. Be one. Till I see you in my next video, subscribe and share this video as widely as possible. Bye for now.